It's time for Timothy. Timothy meets a fellow with a racket and wants to send him to court. There must be a better way, Timothy. Brad, when I'm in high school, will I have a locker of my own? You sure will, Tim, if you're on a school team. I want to be on the tennis team, like you. Good boy. Oh, blast. I left my jacket out on the fence. Better go back and get it. Tim, pal, hang around here a minute and wait for me. Sure, Brad. And uh, keep an eye on my new racket. Things have a way of disappearing mysteriously around here, if you don't watch them. You can count on me, Brad. I'll guard it with my life. Boy, the big kids have all the breaks. When I grow up, I'm going to play football and baseball and basketball and tennis, of course. I'll have so much stuff, they'll have to give me two lockers. when I'm in high school. <laughs> I'm so thirsty after sitting in the sun watching Brad play tennis. Wonder if they have a drinking fountain around here. I think I saw one out in the hall. Guess Brad's racket will be okay. I'll be right back. This racket ought to bring me a few bucks. Looks like new. Where's Brad's racket? It was right here. Now it's gone. Oh, no. I'll bet that kid took it. Where'd he go? Whoops. What's the matter, fella? I'm mad and scared. Scared? Yeah, scared of Brad. Brad? You're scared of Brad? Brad's tennis racket got stolen. He's going to blame me. Now, wait a minute. Someone stole Brad's racket? Did you see who took it? Well, I saw a kid come in here just as I went out to get a drink. I had to have a dumb drink of water. Brad said to watch his racket because things have been disappearing around here. Well, I know who's doing it. Only I was too late to stop him. We'd better call the cops. Oh, hold up a minute, Tim. Was this boy about 13 with a, a round face and dark hair? Yeah, that's him. Must have been in the eighth or ninth grade. That could only have been Rick. I've had my eyes on him for a long time. Funny kid. Got a lot of potential. Yeah, he's got a lot of nerve. No, Rick's got a lot of possibilities. He's a natural athlete, but no one has encouraged him, and he seems to be fighting back at the world. If I could only find a way to help that boy. Do you want my opinion? He ought to be in jail. He's a thief. If he was busy playing tennis like Brad, he wouldn't have time to steal. That's a great idea. Sure is. Let's put him in jail. No, Tim. 
that's not what Rick needs, but your idea about tennis. If we could get him interested, he'd be a natural. Come on. If we hurry, we can catch up with him before he does something foolish with that tennis racket. He stole it. I say he ought to be in jail. Trust me, Tim. I have a plan. There ought to be some sucker hanging around these courts that'd buy this racket. Better unload it quick. Hey, fella. Looking for a game? Wait till I get my racket and we'll hit a few. How'd you like to buy this brand new racket? Sell it to you cheap. No, I've got a new racket. Hey, that is my racket. Where'd you get this racket, kid? You stole my racket. Oh, Rick, I see you borrowed Brad's racket. No need to do that. If you want to learn to play tennis, I'll lend you one of the schools. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I did borrow Brad's racket. Come on over to the tennis trailer, Rick. We'll get a couple rackets, and I'll give you a few pointers right now. And then maybe you and Brad can hit a few. Come on over in a few minutes, Brad. Uh, sure. Okay, Coach. I don't get it. A minute ago, that kid tried to sell me my own racket. Yeah, he stole it. And I think he ought to go to jail. Serve him right. But Coach Harding says he has a plan. Maybe we'd better go along with the coach, Tim. He's a pretty neat guy. I've got a lot of respect for him. Say, how'd Rick steal my racket if you were guarding it? Oh, yeah, Brad. Um, I've been meaning to come to that part. You see, I kind of left the locker room just for a minute to get a drink at the fountain. I'm sorry, Brad. Are you mad at me? No, I'm not mad, Tim. But the next time you say you're going to do something, do it. I'd kind of like to know I can depend on your word. Brad, I promise I won't let you down again. Okay, Tim. Come on. I did promise to hit a few balls with that kid. The coach has him out there right now giving him the basics. Rick, it sure is good to see that you're interested in learning how to play tennis. I would like to see if we can just get the basics of this game down so that you can get out and do some practicing on your own. And then if you'll keep practicing, I'll try to help you as you keep showing an interest in it. Rick, why don't you take your racket here? Uh, Rick, in tennis, there's three basic shots we're going to have to have. Uh, we're going to need to have the uh, serve, and then we're going to need to have a forehand and a backhand for returning serve and keeping the point in progress. Uh, Rick, let me first of all show you what the serve is so that we're ready to learn about how to, how, to, how to play a game. Rick, just step over here just for a minute so I don't hit you when I take my practice serve. So Rick, if you're going to play a game, the very first thing we do is serve. Watch me. Here's my hand right here. I'm going to take my racket down and my racket up. See where my hand is? It's right behind my head, isn't it? Now watch. If I were to throw this racket, it would just like that, wouldn't it? If I took, this, took the handle of this racket and I threw it, but just like that. Look where my hand is. Same place. I'm going to throw it. Watch me, Rick. I'm going to serve one here. So I'm down together. I'm up together. And I throw. Rick, you step up here. Let's see if you can just at least learn a little bit about the serve so you can get ready to start playing games. First to grip, Rick. Notice I put a piece of tape on your racket. Here's a finger. And there's, here's your thumb and finger. And it forms a V right on that mark there. Six, That's three, eight, grip. forty-nine, right sixteen. Right you stand sideways toward where you're serving, and you put your racket toward where you're serving. Put the ball in your hand. Six, now, three, eight, When I did that eight, practice serve, four, I went nine, down together and I went up six. together, and then I let go of the ball and finished my swing, which is what you'll need to hit it hard one of these days. But just to get the ball on the court, the very first thing we have to do is just keep it simple. So I want you to just take the racket down itself and take the racket up. We're going to do it by parts. Instead of going down together and up together. I want you first, y'all, I want to just go down, up, and then down, up, and take your swing. Let me talk you through it. You ready? Take the racket down, take the racket up, all right. Now take your toss, down, up. Rick, that was amazing for a first serve. Amazing. I've got, I want to see you do one more like that. you really got some potential here. Let's do that once more. Here we go, Rick. Let's take that racket down, take the racket up, now down, up on the toss. 
Not quite as good as the first one, but I think you seem to already know enough about the survey. We ought to go on. Hey, look at that, Coach. Anyone who can return Brad's serve is pretty good, because Brad's the best. <laughs> you kind of like Brad, don't you, Tim? Sure, we're buddies. Of course, he's a lot older than me, but Brad doesn't mind that. I learn a lot of neat things from him. And you know what? Sometimes Brad learns something from me. No kidding. Take frisbees, for instance. Brad was lousy at throwing frisbees till I showed him how to give it a quick twist of the wrist. Guess we can all learn from each other. Sure is great to have a special friend to be interested in you. Hey, good game, fellas. <laughs> he gave me a run for my money. You're fast on your feet, Rick. <laughs> You really think so, Brad? I sure do. Can we play again, maybe? How about tomorrow morning, about 7, before school? We'll work on your serve. Sure. Great. Fantastic. Well, I've got to go now, but I'll see you right here tomorrow at 7 a.m. for sure. So long. For sure, Rick. Uh, see ya. You're right, Coach. He does have talent. Yeah, for stealing. Let's see if we can't help him with his talent for tennis instead, Tim. But he's a tough kid. Mean. Not as tough and mean as I was as a kid, Tim. You're kidding. Not so, Tim. I grew up in a part of town so tough, I had to fight to hold my own. I was just about to drop out of school. I got in some real trouble and was sent to the juvenile detention center. One of the leaders there was taking some of the boys on a wilderness canoeing trip in northern Minnesota, and for some reason, he invited me to come along. We drove in a van to northern Minnesota. Seemed like the end of nowhere. No cities there, just trees and lakes and wild animals. We got four 17-foot canoes and several huge packs of food and started canoeing across the lakes, sometimes on calm water, and other times it was rough and choppy. Between the lakes, we had to carry the canoes and our gear along portage trails over rough, rocky hills. At first, we were a scrappy bunch, fighting among ourselves, griping about the heavy loads, grumbling about the hard work. Then one day, we saw a couple of young girls all by themselves carrying a 17-foot canoe on their shoulders. They were singing as they walked through the woods. When they came to the edge of the lake, they swung the canoe into the water with ease and paddled off laughing and having a ball. Really put us big tough guys to shame and made us shape up. We learned to do our own cooking build a fire even in wet weather by whittling out the dry wood from the center of logs. We soon found out that we really needed to be able to depend on each other or else we would get lost or hurt or even drowned. It was just we nine guys against the elements and before long we were great friends. We made a few other friends too like the old black bear who followed us and crept into our camp at night to steal our chocolate candy bars. Nighttime around the campfire was a pretty special time. We'd sit and talk about the hassles we faced back home, our problems with our parents, our friends, or drugs. One night, those guys convinced me that I'd be foolish to quit school when I had only one year to finish. We really got our head of things. I'll never forget one day we were working around our campsite when we heard someone yelling for help. Some kids were stranded in the middle of the lake. Their canoe had capsized and wrapped itself around a boulder. They had been canoeing in rapids, fast water, and weren't too skillful at handling the situation. I jumped into the water and swam downstream with a long, strong rope. I threw one end of it to the guys on shore. The kids pulled themselves through, through the rapids by the rope and made it safely to shore. It took about three hours. 
we were all worn out. Those kids thought I was some kind of hero or something. Made me feel pretty proud of myself. I hadn't panicked, just did what I had to do. But I had done something good for a change. I had accomplished something. Those fellas believed in me, said I had abilities. It was a good feeling. I sure liked myself a lot better when I got back from that trip than I had before I left. Well, to make a long story short, I did go back to, to school, got a job and got myself through college with the help of an athletic scholarship. Now I'd kind of like to pass it on, help other young people turn their lives around. And I think Rick is worth spending a little time with. Sure is. It might even change the whole direction of his life. You can count on me to help, Coach. I sure do hate to get up early in the morning, but if he shows up, I'll be on hand to help work off some of his energies on that tennis ball. I don't like to get up early either, but I want to help too. I could run after your tennis balls, be your ball boy. Okay, Brad? <laughs> Great, Tim. See you at 7 a.m. Rick? Tim? No one. I should have known those lazy bums still in the sack. Wish I had brought my biology book along. Could have been studying for my quiz today instead of wasting my time. Brad, you here? Guess I kind of overslept. I forgot to tell Granny to call me. Where's Rick? Don't ask. He didn't show? He didn't show. I knew it. He's a stealer and a liar. We try to help him and he lets us down. How can we help him if he doesn't show up to be helped? Beats me. Maybe we should have minded our own business. Yeah, maybe we should have called the cops. Come on, I'd better change or I'll be late for class. See you later, Brad. I could have had another half hour's sleep if it hadn't been for that dumb Rick. How'd it go this morning, Brad? Oh, just great. If you like playing tennis with yourself. He didn't show up? You might say that. Good old Tim arrived, a little late and sleepy-eyed, but no Rick. I'm sorry, Brad. I really had hopes. Coach, Brad, Rick. Where the dickens were you this morning? Hey, where'd you get that black eye? Well, I was in a fight. <laughs> what did the other guy look like? Not so great. I came to return some tennis balls and a volleyball I borrowed, uh, ripped off last week. I was kind of wondering where they went. Who blacked your eye? This buddy, well, ex-buddy of mine. He called me a sissy. You a sissy? Why? Well, when I told him I was going to meet Brad to learn to play tennis, this creep started making fun of me. So I hauled off and I gave it to him. He gave it right back. And before long, wham, we were at it. Brad, were you really waiting for me at the courts this morning? Yeah, I was there all right. Well, this creep said you wouldn't show up. Said you were a big shot high school tennis star and didn't care two beans about me. But you really did care. You showed up. Look, Rick, I think you've got the stuff to be a really good tennis player. I want to help you learn. You might even be good enough to enter the citywide junior tennis matches. But it'll mean hard work, getting up early, and staying out of the way of guys who give you black eyes. Understand? Well, I won't let you down. Boy, just imagine me playing in the city-wide tennis matches. Wow! If you work hard. Man, will I ever work hard? 7 a.m. tomorrow morning? Right on, Rick. 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, and the next, and the next, <laughs> and the next. You slave driver. You'd better believe it. And Rick, try jogging to the courts. Helps your breath control. That's important in tennis. Rick, 
I've been watching you playing over the last month, and I'm really proud of the way you've been progressing. Your serve you've been working real hard on, and it's just really come along. I think that you're going to have to work some on your backhand. Uh, from what I've been watching you practice, the thing I've noticed, Rick, is that every time you hit your backhand, it seems to go a little bit high in the air, and it also doesn't have much speed on it. And what's really happening, Rick, is this. Rick, do you remember how when I showed you how to hit your forehand, I showed you the grip. And, you know, we put the finger and thumb like this, and it formed a V right on the top. Well, on the backhand, if you had moved your hand over a little bit, see, if we use a little bit different grip for that backhand, then you get a little bit of meat behind that racket. So when you get ready to hit it, you got some strain. But your problem was, see, you're over here on the forehand, and so it just didn't get enough power. So I want you to move over into here, so when uh, you see that ball coming across the net, you're going to find you're going to get a little more power, and the angle of that racket is going to end up that way, instead of being tilted up like that. So that's really all we need to do is just to angle that racket right. Okay. Now let's just practice that for a minute. Hey, Rick, wait up. Hi, Tim. How's my favorite ball boy? Great, Rick. Just heard the news. Coach Harding said you'd been picked to represent the school in the citywide tennis matches. Can you believe it? Old slave driver Brad really kept after me, especially on my backhand. But I made it. Boy, oh boy, if I could just win that tournament, the coach and Brad would really be proud of me. Tim, I've been feeling awful about something. That first day in the locker room, why didn't you snitch on me? Tell the coach and Brad you saw me stealing that racket. They knew, Rick. I did tell the coach, and Brad knew too. Huh, he didn't even knock me silly. He should have. Just kept me swinging that old racket like it really mattered to him. I wasn't worth all that. He thought you were. He likes you, Rick. Now you better start liking yourself or I'll knock you silly. <laughs> You're not big enough. <laughs> I know. Now go knock him dead on the tennis court. We'll all be cheering for you. Well, I'll try to win. I've got to win for Brad and the coach. You'll be great. After the matches, come on over to Granny's for a celebration. <laughs> Look, Look at Oh, and me. Oh, and the loose. Oh. Have you seen Rick yet? Uh, I don't think he's here, Tim. Uh, the coach said he saw him heading in the other direction after the matches. I think coach went after him. Rick better come. Rick, what kept you? This party's for you. It's a celebration. I didn't win, so what's there to celebrate? You played a terrific game, Rick. Best I've ever seen you do, buddy. But not good enough. I let you down. I didn't win. I wanted to win so you'd be proud of me. You almost won. You were in the playoffs. You don't know how proud I was of you, Rick. Nobody out there had a backhand like yours. I kept saying, that's our boy, Rick. You don't care that I didn't win? This was your first tournament, man. You handled yourself like a pro. You gave everything you had, and I really am proud of you. Well, I learned a lot out there today. Next time, just watch my dust. I'm proud of you too, Rick. But I'm warning you, you better stay in shape. When I'm bigger and learn to play tennis, I'll beat the socks off of you. <laughs> Why wait till you get bigger? Wish I'd started at your age. Your first lesson is at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Huh? Who's going to teach me? I am, that's who. And no goofing off, you hear? We gotta start training new guys and gals for the junior tournament. Next year, I'll be playing on the senior high team. I want you to get good enough to give me a good workout. That's the spirit, Rick. Rick? Remember I promised that when you were good enough, I'd see that you had a fine racket of your own? Yeah. Well, on behalf of all the kids in the tennis program, I'd like to present you with this autographed racket, strung to your specifications. We're proud of you, Rick, and we're expecting great things of you in the future. Gee, thanks, Coach. Thanks, gang. I really don't deserve it. You deserve it, you deserve it. Now, come on. Let's get some of that ice cream and cake, okay? <laughs> <laughs>